Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we're back to work on some fuel lines in the car. <laughs> this car has kind of a lot of fuel lines. So there are three on the engine. We've already dealt with those with the intake manifold, but there's really either five or seven, however you look at it, left in the car. So we have two lines, basically. One from the tank that comes up, goes through the pump and into the engine. And then there's another one that returns back to the tank. So we always have these dual fuel lines. This line right here is the return line and it's original and it's super duper stiff. It's not leaking technically, but it's, um, you know, it definitely needs to be replaced. The rest of the lines, funny on this car, are hard lines. They're actually steel that go down to the tunnel. Then into the tunnel, we have plastic lines that go all the way to the front. And then swaged onto that are some rubber lines. And those are the ones that connect to the pump and the return on the tank itself. So we're gonna be replacing the whole suite, but it's actually pretty darn difficult to use the original parts. So we have something kind of cool I wanna show you found a guy online who makes replacement fuel lines for this car, but he breaks them up. So the front lines are no longer swaged to the plastic lines that go through the tunnel. This is the kit I've been referring to. These are the plastic lines. So these are the ones that are gonna go in the tunnel. These are made from coal line. They're high quality. They'll be great with uh, modern fuels. They have these correct connectors put on the end here. This is the end that goes to the front of the car and and this is the end that goes in the back and you can see the connectors are a little bit different. In addition to the plastic lines here, we also have new front lines. So on the original Porsche part, these front lines, what, this one goes to the pump and this one goes to the return line on the gas tank itself. Normally those are swaged onto these plastic lines and they're not removable. And that's what makes the original lines so difficult to put in. So Porsche put them in when they didn't have steering racks in, they didn't have the engine in, they didn't have hardly anything in. They could go ahead and put in their original lines with these guys mounted to them just fine. And it really wasn't that hard. Hard. But now that we have the steering rack in and everything, it makes it a pain. Having the engine out of the car makes it much, much easier. Although it can be done with the engine in the car. The kit also comes with a new set of rubber grommets, two for the front and two for the back. And it also comes with this super cool coupler. So this guy, these are the lines in the back. We're gonna screw on to the original line that's in the car and then screw the new line on with our coupler here. And that's what's gonna give us the ability to pull them all the way through from the back all the way through up to the front. Our first step in this process is going to be to remove our driver's seat and the center console. We need to get as much access as we possibly can to the tunnel. That'll give us access to the tunnel. We can take a look inside there and see what we've got going on with those internal tunnel fuel lines. All right, well, that wasn't super straightforward. I've had that center console out a couple of times when I installed the shift kit on here and did some work on the shifter years ago, but I don't remember it being that fussy to get that thing out, but wow. Anyway, I've got it kind of rolled out of the way. This hole back here is really what we need, that big access hole back there. All right, this is our prize. This is the access port we need, and I believe our fuel lines are just under this lip under here. I can feel two of them. Now there's some metal clamps that are holding these fuel lines in, and that's what we've got to release so we can pull our fuel lines through the tunnel. Well, I picked up an endoscope and it's pretty sweet. Allows me to record and everything just uses my phone as a display. So it's a pretty simple device here and it's pretty small. So I'm gonna use this to get inside the tunnel. Let's take a look in there and see what we see. All right, so going forward, 
There's the fuel lines that as they exit the tunnel up front, and you can see those rubber grommets that they're on as well. well we got a lot of stuff in here. This is a busy little tunnel in here. So there's our fuel lines up there. Those guys there. There's also a metal rod up here as well. But those are the fuel lines there. You can kind of see them if I push the rod down a little bit. That clamp that's right there, do you see that? That's holding the fuel lines up to the top and keeps that metal rod away from them. So we'll have to pull that out of the way as well. There's a better image of the clamp there. And there's our fuel lines as they exit the tunnel. This is at the engine side, so back on the firewall. Now that we're prepared somewhat with the tunnel from the inside of the car, let's take a look at what we've got back here and kind of what we're up against today. So these are our fuel lines here. These guys here, they, they're kind of interesting looking. They're metal at this point. They're coming out of the tunnel right here and they're plastic. So plastic here to these two connectors here, and then then they're metal lines and they run up into the engine compartment. Now these rubber grommets I mentioned here are original. The kit comes with new grommets, four of them total. So what I'm gonna do is to make this a lot easier, I'm gonna end up pushing those grommets through first. That way they won't impede the pull back and forth. They're also split, so they're not too hard once they're in. You could pop them off from the inside and just get them out of the way. I'm gonna start by breaking loose the hard line here from the center tunnel line. This is a 17, the actual hard line is a 17. This guy here on the end of the plastic tube is 11 millimeters, so that's this guy. There's not gonna be a lot of uh, leverage I'm going to get. Ah, there it goes. Okay, not too bad then. All right, we'll go ahead and loosen this guy up. Let the gas drip down here a little bit. Well, honestly, that was a lot easier than I thought because I have read that those things were so hard that people had to use long cheater pipes on them and all that. And I wanted to make sure I used the correct flare nut wrench on these things to give it a little extra purchase. Although, you know, we only have our little 11 millimeter in the back, so maybe it really wouldn't have made much difference. You know, it's not that it's super tight, it's just difficult to get to. All right, let's see, there we go. It looks like this one's loose enough. Just about there. All right. All right, just the rest of the gas. Okay, well that's one down. We still have to do the other one. So let's go ahead and loosen that one as well. There we go. Okay, so we're ready here. Let's go ahead and pop this one loose, hopefully or not. Oh boy, that one is kind of tight. Well, let's get some cheater pipes here, make this a little bit easier on ourselves. And if you're looking for cheater pipes, these are the extensions on the jacks and they pop off. They got these little guys here so they can pop off. They make great extensions for this sort of thing. They're perfect for that. So we can use the little one, put it in here and bigger ones, gonna have to go around this side. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Let's see with a little more leverage and see if we can do any better. There it goes. <laughs> Woohoo! With that popped loose, I can use just a regular wrench here because it's a little easier to work with and work this guy off. There's our rubber grommet here. See these guys here and they're kind of hard and old. So we're gonna push those straight through the tunnel so that we'll be prepared to pull our new lines straight through. There, we're making progress, getting that rubber grommet in. There we go. There's one rubber grommet. Go ahead and do the other one. And in it goes. All right, that's both of them. With our plastic lines here loose and ready to go, let's go ahead and get to the front of the car and prep that as well. At the front of the car, I have the big metal skid plate that's underneath here, bolts here. And here, I've got that removed. This is our fuel pump. This is the fuel line that's coming through, well, it actually goes into the tunnel from here. But this is the one that's tied to those tunnel lines. And this is the return line. So this guy's coming through the tunnel as well. Now to find those fuel lines, they're a little difficult to see. They're up here. You can see right there, it's one of them. And then you can see the two of them here, this one and this one. And then they enter into the tunnel right here and here. 
This is our steering rack here, which is completely and totally in the way. So my first step is going to be to knock this loose and knock this loose. Let's start with our return line here. This is a 17 millimeter. All right. There we go. Not too bad. With all this corrosion, I expected it to actually be worse. Let's go ahead and get the line off of the pump. This one is fairly big. It's a 19. And you've got a 17 here that you can hold on to. There we go. Oh, there we go. Holy cow, that was pretty tight. All right, looks like we have a little gas dribblage. Our next step in this is to get these lines up over the steering rack and down to the other side. I think that's going to be kind of a thing. There's a bracket they have to go through and it looks like it's kind of spot welded on both sides. So we're going to have to work those lines through. Might be a little weird, but I think we can get it done. I want to get that guy through there. I don't know. Oh, there it goes. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Okay, so now we have to get the nut through. Look at this. All right, that's it. That's the hot setup. So this guy has to go first. Look at that, it did go through. Ah, oh, tab fabulous. Okay, well let's look, get you out of the way. Now we need to get this guy through. So this is gonna be fun. There's a bump here on the steering rack, which we have to kind of get around. Okay, there we go. Now let's see, if you come up here like this, will you go through now? Grab all this line, try and pull it through. There it goes. Ha! Look at that. All right. Well, I'm quite surprised actually, but that is the hot setup is you want to pull this guy off first. This one here, pull it through because it's got a bend in it. It kind of goes around the corner. And then once there, once this one is out of that holder up there, there's enough room to pull the banjo bolt through. So, Yay, all right. Next step is gonna be like we did on the back. We're gonna to have to push our grommets through and then we're gonna set up to pull these lines through by connecting our new lines at the other end. All right, well, sweet. That is awesome. We got our grommets pushed through on both sides. We've got our hoses loose. We're pretty close. What I wanna do is lower the car, get into the tunnel and remove those grommets from the actual hard line so they don't cause any fouling as I pull them through. And then I think we can get to hooking up in the back and pulling these guys through. We'll see how it goes. All right, well, we're set to pull one of these lines through. We're just gonna do them one at a time because we only have one coupler. I looked up front and the two lines kind of come out and then they turn towards the right side of the car and one sort of sits on the outside and one on the inside. The one on the outside is the one on the left side. So let's start with that one. I think it's gonna be easier to get that one out first. So that's this line in here. And also I put a piece of fuel hose over the end of this because as I'm kind of dragging this through, I don't want it to get any crap in it. I don't want to mess up these threads at all. And also it kind of reminds me you know these things aren't the same on both ends so we want to make sure we pull the correct one through the tunnel or we're going to end up doing it all backwards the big long connections in the back here is the one that that obviously stays on this side so these the little ones with a dimple in them or female-y kind of thing they're the ones that are going to end up in the front so that's the one we're going to hook our coupler to here and then we're going to spin that on to our old line there. And these just have to be in a few turns. It's no big deal. They don't have to be like super tight or anything because these, these lines aren't gonna spin. You know what, I think it's probably easier maybe to put the coupler on the, line, the other line first. All right, so screw this guy on a bit, about halfway-ish. We'll take this guy and screw it on the end here. Okay, well, I think it's on there. I think we buried pretty much both sides of it. Well, I'm gonna leave this end of it just sort of dangling here below the car. Okay, well, let's get to the front of the car and start pulling through and see how we do. All right, this is the line we're gonna go with first, kind of because it's sitting sort of over the top of the other one. I think it's gonna be easier. All right, so that's it right there. So we're just gonna have to work this guy out. We've got, unfortunately, this line just below it here, like I can barely get my finger on, that guy right there is a brake line. So we have to be careful of that. And over here, we've got part of the brake block there. Okay, let's go. Start to pull this guy through. 
There we go. All right. Well, that's better than I thought, huh? Okay, sort of pulling through. Oh, we can see our line here at the other end moving, so we're pulling that through. That's basically what we're doing there. All right. There we go. I very much expect this to get caught on something, and it hasn't so far. It's very strange. There's our end coming through. There it is. See that? There's our, there's our end. Just about at the end here. There. Ooh. And we got to pull our connection all the way through. There we go, unscrewing. There it goes. Okay, well look at that. There's our first new fuel line. They're poking its little nose through. That looks great. Well, that went pretty well. I've heard some nightmarish tales of people trying to get these fuel lines in. So let's do just like we did with the other one. Go ahead and insert this guy on here like we did. All right, we are set here. Let's go back to the front and pull our second line through. This time it did get hung up somewhere inside the tunnel, so I went ahead and pulled it back out the back of the car and wrapped a little red electrical tape around it, and that way, when I pulled it back through again, it managed to get past whatever it was it was fouling on inside the tunnel. That bit of fuel line there on the end keeps it from going all the way through so we can get the most length up in the front. So I'm gonna feed this one through first, because that's the way it worked last time, was that was the last one out. Well, there we go. Putting them in is just the reverse of taking them out. So we started with the banjo, putting it in sort of at a diagonal, and went right in, and then the last one was the bent one, and pushing that nut in first, and then working the tubing in after that. So there we go, we've got our two lines inside that retainer. That was not straightforward. Next step was to just loosely fit. These things are just loose on here and you can see this isn't even tight yet. And then on this side, same deal. We wanted to lightly fit these on here. So they're just, they're just screwed on just lightly. Now the big question was, all right, so which one's which, yes? I mean, that was the big question. This one, the one on the inside of the car, so we're gonna call this one the inside and this one on the left-hand side. The inside line for me runs all the way through to the pump and the outside line is the one that runs to the return. So let's go in the back of the car and verify that that's exactly correct. Now the reason this is kind of confusing is because of this completely bashed line. What happened was, and this is what got me kind of confused, was it got pushed over the top of the other line. And I got a little confused as to which one was which. I'm like, which one of these lines is which? But the way to find out is to really grab one of them. How about this bashed up one? And see what moves. And there we go, it's the return line up there. The other line, the one that isn't bashed up here, you can kind of see that, can you see the, the filter moving up there a little bit. All right, so that is our line out of the pump. So looking at these again, this is the line out of the pump, this is the return, we have the line out of the pump running through this, will be hooked up to the center one, and the other one is going to be our return. I'm torquing to 12 Newton meters or nine foot pounds. So this is a 15 here and this guy is a 17. There we go, that's one. Go ahead and torque the second one. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's that. Okay, well we're moving along here. Before we go nuts pulling these back through the tunnel, let's put our rubber bushings back on. We'll throw our grommet, our grommet is all greased up here. 
with silicone grease, throw it over the line there, and then what we're gonna do is push it into the car first. I think this has the best possibility. It'll actually get in, seat, and do what it's supposed to do. The silicone just is amazing stuff. It really, really helps. Get in there, kiddo. Yeah, I think it's going in. Yep, it feels like it is. How does that look? Looks good, actually. It's closed all the way around. Looks like it's seated all the way in. Okay, great. This took a bit of finagling, but our grommet is actually in and seated. And it looks all shiny because it's coated with silicone. But our line here needs to go into the, towards the rear a bit. I think though, before I do that, I wanna do the one next to it as well and get that one in. So we've got both of our grommets in and they're both seated completely. So that's a great start. We can push this line in a bit further, I think. Yeah, all the way there, just like that, yay. And then this one as well, push this one in and get it as far as it will go. There, like that. All right, there's our two lines in. They're not contacting this, the brake bit at all. They're seated completely in the grommets and our lines look good. All right, I am super stoked about that. That looks awesome. This is how it ended up. We've got our grommet completely seated all the way around. It's all nice and wet because of the silicone grease. And the other grommet is also seated all the way around. So that looks great. Our two lines are coming out. They do not contact this little 90 degree bit for the brakes and they don't contact here. They look great. Okay, well let's go ahead and torque down our two connections here. We've got this one on the pump and we have this return line going in the tank. Before we're finished up here, we have one more fuel line and that's just a little piece of rubber fuel line that goes between the tank here and the pump. Super simple, just a couple of clamps. Let me go ahead and throw this on. Now you're probably wondering, you just took the fuel line off the bottom of the tank. How come no gas came out? Great question. I spent a day working on the gas tank. So when we bought this car, the gas tank was filled full of crap. It had chips in it and all sorts of stuff. And you know, if I'm honest, it's not 100%, really it isn't. I took a look inside of it. There's a little bit of rust inside of it. And when I pulled this plug on the bottom here, there's a big screen in here. I expected to see a lot of chips. I saw no chips, which was awesome. But I did see a little bit of rust debris and stuff in there and then also sort of sitting in the tank sort of right around this area there was a lot of rust and stuff so you know it's an old tank so we've never had any other problems with it um once we bought the car i cleaned all this out in fact the screen was even broken i couldn't believe it so i pulled this plug out there's a long screen it's attached to the plug and it had snapped off yikes so there was like no filtration going into the pump and the pump was fairly pissed off about that it was screaming really bad so when these pumps get hot and don't and uh, aren't able to really flow properly they'll get super super noisy and most people just go ahead and replace the pump at that point which is what I did as well but while I was doing that I thought you know what I better double check the tank and sure enough it was a mess so I replaced this plug and got one with an actual screen in it and replaced the fuel filter replaced the pump and it's been great ever since actually so I think I pump is fine and I think the tank is going to be okay-ish I guess we'll have to see it might be something that we'd have to replace at some point but um for now I think we're good with all of this done up front let's go ahead and move to the back of the car and get to those rear lines so I'm here at the back of the car we've got the whole front sorted which means that our lines back here are now where they need to be also means we can put in our grommet so that's the same process as, as it was up front we're just gonna lube them up really well they're all split so we just put them over and just push them in should go in pretty quickly with our new grommets in place next step is going to be replace these old hard lines up here. 
Well, holy cow, it's been two weeks since that last scene. And the whole fuss has been these fuel lines in the back here. So normally, the from the, from the factory, these are metal lines. And I really needed to replace at least this bit on the return line. So on the return line, we've got a rubber on the end. And we've got a metal line that looks like this. It's a little hard to even show. It's super weird and bent in a zillion different ways. Kind of crazy. But our line here has a very bad nick in it. And this is what I was mentioning before where the previous owner must have bashed it with the transmission when they were putting the engine in the car. All right, so I'm kind of looking at replacing at least this entire line right here. So that, and in addition, I've got a steel line here. Now this is the pressure line. This goes from back here in the tunnel all the way up into the fuel filter. And it's also bent kind of crazy. Take a look at all those bends in it. I didn't really need to replace this, but I thought, well, if I'm gonna replace the other one and that way I just do both of them because if there's any rust, these are steel. And if there's any rust inside of them, I didn't want to find out later. So I sourced new lines, actual Porsche lines, I thought. And our great friends at Auto House AZ came up with the parts and it looked great. And the part numbers looked right. And when they shipped them out, uh, I think Porsche pulled a fast one on us. So our problem was that this line, the return line, ended up being sort of a mirror image of this part. It's kind of a weird story, but it just something to do with the part numbers and superseding different part numbers and blah, blah, blah. But at any rate, we couldn't do it. We just, we just, they didn't have the part. And this is one we really needed to replace. As far as the pressure line goes, they did have one and it was close, but it was actually missing a few bends here towards the end. And I just thought, you know what? I don't think it's really going to fit perfectly. And since our old one is in good shape, I ended up sending those two lines back to Auto House. And unfortunately, that left me with it still the dilemma of what do I do with the return line? Now, fortunately, the same gentleman who put together these plastic lines that go through the tunnel here, our tunnel lines, and our lines up front can make up a fully flexible line for the return. You can also make one up for the pressure line, but of course we don't need that. But look at this. It's very, very nice. It's got the proper fittings on both ends. It looks great. But all of this fuss took a couple of weeks of back and forth and this and that. So here we are a couple of weeks later. And what I wanna do tonight is go ahead and finish up this install, hook up to our plastic lines here and rerun our lines up into the engine bay. Now I kinda wish I hadn't taken this big metal fuel line out now, but at this point, we're gonna have to finagle it and put it back in. I've put some tape on the end of it. This is the end that will end up in the engine bay. I just don't want any dirt or schmutz getting in it as we push it up through. So it's obviously with these crazy bends in this thing, it's not really straightforward as to how this thing goes up. So it'll take me a few tries to kind of wrangle it around, but I think we'll get it up there. So it has to go underneath this line here, this brake booster line, and it goes underneath our power cable as well. And it sort of has to kind of work its way up here. There's just so many things kind of in the way. Oh, well, finally, this is how we ended up. So this line has to snake its way up here and it has to go on the outside of that plastic block. And we've got our little braided line in the middle. The third one there on the outside was for the return line, which we're not gonna be using. But you can see that bend up there and then yet another bend up there. You can see why that thing has so many crazy bends to it in order to make its way all the way up through that teeny little slot up there. And then up here in the engine bay, you can see it comes around the back there ends up going through this block again, another plastic block, comes down and then hooks up here for the fuel filter. But that's, that's the routing of this thing. It's pretty nutty, huh? As this thing is, boy, it's complicated. And this line up here just doesn't feel like it was kind of exactly right. So I went back and checked my pictures and sure enough, it doesn't go on the top of this plastic block. It goes on the bottom of this block. So here I've got the line sitting on the top of this block. It needs to go down on the bottom of the block. That's why we're having so many problems here. We ran out of the evening, so it's the next morning. Let's go ahead and see where we are. We've got our hard 
hard pressure line in. I think it looks good. I think it's in the right spot here. And I think next what I want to do is connect it to the tunnel line down below. And then we also have to install our return line. So let's get to that this morning. We want to make sure we have the correct line out of the tunnel. So our pressure line is the one that's closest to the center of the car and the return is on the outside. So this is the one we want to hook up. Pull our little rubber cap off of this. There we go. All right, we just want to thread this on. All we're doing here is just cinching this down. We have our line cinched down here. I'm going to go ahead and torque it just as I have for the all the lines up front. Set it in there. All right. There we go. All torqued down. Well, that looks great. We've got our pressure line all installed. We're good here. Next is going to be the return line. And this guy is a little different because it's obviously not stock, just a full rubber line. The other thing about it that's important is this part doesn't swivel. So we're gonna have to attach it to our line in the tunnel first and then feed up the, the hose through from the bottom. Can't do it the other way around. So let's go ahead and install this and torque it. Need to get, okay. Okay, great. All right. With that seated all the way, let's go ahead and torque it like we did our pressure line. There we go. Let's go ahead and snake this up to the engine compartment up there. We're going to route it very similar to our pressure hard line here. And there's our end there. It's good. We still have our tape on there, so it's nice and clean. Now this end will eventually snake over to the engine when it's actually installed. So it just sort of hangs out here for now. Well, those rubber lines are certainly a lot easier to install than the steel ones, huh? Now we still need to push our brake booster line and our cable back up here as well. And then we can kind of put our clamps back on and sort of button all this stuff up down here. All right, that's our brake booster line. It's important to note that it goes on the outside of these fuel lines, sort of holding them in. It's one of the things that makes it a big pain to get these fuel lines out, is you've got to get this guy out of the way in order to start. Next is going to be our big electrical bundle here and it's not too bad. I just sort of unclipped it here to give myself a little more room. So we'll go ahead and put these clips back on. Well that looks great, huh? We've got our fuel lines in, we've got our electrical, we've got our brake booster line. That looks great. Here's how our connections ended up here. Look pretty good, routed up through there. You can see them going all the way up and entering into the engine bay up there. In order to fill this crevice up here, this entryway into the engine bay, Porsche used just a piece of foam is all it is. It's just foam rubber, but you can see it's literally just crumbling and falling apart. So I'm going to replace that. I've got some new foam here. It's just yellow closed cell foam here. And I'm going to stuff it up in there and use a little bit of contact cement once I've kind of got it where I think it needs to be. With that foam piece in, the last thing I want to do down here is to put our little valve here for the heating system back up and just kind of work this guy through. Now, I want to be very careful. This plastic tube is very brittle. Well, I kind of knew this was going to be a difficult task and I wasn't wrong. Part of the problem, probably the biggest hassle was just really sourcing the correct parts. And that's a thing for an old 30 year old car, even a Porsche, they made tons of these cars. So you'd think there'd be lots of parts available and there are, but as we saw parts get superseded and sometimes they're not correct, but then there's always these guys in the background that come to the rescue and make these wonderful parts for us so that we can continue maintaining these awesome cars. So a special thank you to Len Cummings who puts together these kits for the tunnel lines and the front lines and these rear lines as well. And I'll leave his information down below and you can contact him if you've got one of these cars and you need a set of lines built. It's really a, an amazing time saver in order to have it all broken up into pieces. All right, well, where are we on the project? Great question. We've got lots of parts back now. We've got all the power coating and all of the ceramic coating back for the engine. So that's cool. So we can start working on putting the engine back together finally. That's going to be killer. The engine bay in here is a mess. As you've seen through this, it's just dirty and it's crummy. So I'm going to clean all of that as well and get in there. And that's going to be kind of a dirty job. But um, I think it'll look nice once it's all done. And that engine really deserves a clean engine bay. 
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and you know I'll get right to them. As always, a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. All right, well, we've got lots more videos here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do that right now. Hit the little bell next to it to get notified. Really sorry this has taken so long to get this video out, but it's just been a thing. So, all right, at any rate, well, thank you so, so much. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.